Here at MVP K9 Supplements, our mission statement is very fitting. Infusing dynamic energy into man's best friend. No one does that any better than the world-class trainers, handlers, and breeders who give their lives, bringing us a better man's best friend. Through Way of the Canine Trainer Series, we spotlighted the philosophies, systems, and sometimes controversial training methods of the men and women devoted to canines. Of course, our main goal is to be the number one canine supplement company in the world today. But through Way of the Canine Trainer, our vision is to raise the public consciousness and esteem of the world's best canine trainers, breeders, and handlers. If you like watching someone bake a cake or catch crabs, we're sure you're going to find it very interesting watching the MVP Canine Supplement Crew get behind the scenes with real trainers and real dogs. From home protection dogs to police canines, from hog catching dogs to show dogs, from Shudson to PSA, we've got them all. So sit back, take the way of the canine journey with Stan and me. Our vision is rooted in one simple question. Who really cares about the dog trainer, breeder, handler? Way the canine trainer does. Meet Kirk and Stan, two guys on a mission to build a better man's best friend. Since the first day I met Kirk, I've never known a harder working person in my life. His devotion to his family and friends and willingness to help others is second to none. Outside of being an extremely loyal and overly honest person, his passion to succeed in all parts of life has played a huge role in our friendship. Since I've known Stan, I've always been impressed with his creativity. When I first met him at my MMA gym and I saw his ability on the mat and later observed his passion for dogs, it inspired a mutual respect that has been the basis for our friendship. Follow them across the country as they search for the best of the best in canines and trainers alike. First stop, Martville, New York, home of Gail Raponi, owner of Tough Nuff Kennels. So this is Marksville, New York, home of Tough Enough Kennels, Mr. Gail Raponi, Emperor of the American Bull Molasser. <laughs> Stan, Molasser. All right, remember that. You don't want to piss this guy off when we drive up to his kennel. It's a world-class breeder, trainer. You've got to get the word right. It's not molasser. It's molasser. So you really feel like this guy's system is going to represent the company pretty well? Yes, I do. Absolutely. When you, when, when you drive up and start seeing what this guy's product is, you're going to be impressed. After driving 25 hours non-stop, we finally pull into Tough Enough Kennels to meet Gail Raponi for the very first time. Honey, I'm home. <laughs> finally stepping on the property and hearing the dogs bark revived us both and gave us a surge of needed energy. Gail? Yes, sir. Kirk. Pleasure, man. How are you? How are you? Yo, Finally man. meet you. This is Gail Raponi, Stan, Stan Smith. Nice to meet you, buddy. Nice to meet you. How was the trip? Oh, uh, well, everything was great until the yeah. snow blizzard yesterday in Buffalo. A lot of snow? Oh, more snow than I've ever seen. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what we get up here. Well, uh, come on, I'll introduce you to the family. Family, okay. I want to see the family. Walking up to the cages, I'm anxious to learn about the breeds that Gail has used to create the American Bull Molosser. And with about 20 dogs, there's a lot to see. Uh, the breeds that I use to uh, develop and create the American Bull Molosser were Dog de Bordeaux, which is a French Mastiff, the South African Borbo, which is a South African Mastiff, uh, the Neapolitan Mastiff, the Connie Corso, the American Bulldog, or the Heinz Bulldog, the Hermes Bulldog, and the Johnson Bulldog, and the Rottweiler. After seeing Gail's impressive lineup, it's time to warm up inside and meet the rest of the Raponi family. Hey guys, I'd like you to meet Kirk Dudley from Dallas. This is my family. Hi, Dallas. Dallas. Nice to meet you. Hi, Stan. Nice to meet you, Tracy. Nice to meet you. Stan. Nice to meet you, Kirk. Nice to meet you. 
Come on in. We'll shake off a little cold. I understand you have a few questions. Gil, you have a family business here, correct? No, it's more of a hobby than anything else. Does your, does your family help you in your day-to-day -day duties with yes. the kennel? Yes. Yeah. I've got five sons and two daughters, and they're a big help. I wouldn't have been able to do this without their help. Have you taught your boys how to train the dogs, or is it just the, the breeding and the, um, the everyday uh, duty of the kennels that they help with? No, some of my boys handle, some of them agitate, and they're uh, proficient at uh, both. Gail, give us a definition of the ABM. Uh, the ABM is an American bull molosser. It's a uh, cross between your bull breeds and molosser breeds, bred here in America. So basically it's a band dog? No, not necessarily. Uh, a band dog is uh, generally an F1 cross, uh, bull to uh, mastiff, uh, let's say like a pit bull to uh, a Neapolitan mastiff. That would be considered a band dog uh, or a pit bull to a uh, bull mastiff would be a band dog. Generally, your first generation crosses are band dogs, and the band dog breeders are quite specific about that. Tell us about how you became a breeder and trainer of the American Bull Molosser. Okay, back in 1985, I bought a German Shepherd, and I uh, spent some money on the dog and some Schutzen training. Uh, the dog ended up being stolen. After that point, I decided that uh, I needed to uh, develop a breed of my own and get more involved in the personal protection and the defense end of things. I wasn't real pleased with what was in the mainstream uh, as far as working dogs, uh, especially for the uh, personal protection, defense specifically. And uh, I wanted a dog that was a man stopper, and uh, in every sense of that word. But I also needed a dog that had the temperament that could handle that type of training. So I developed the ABM. I see. I haven't had any ABM stolen. Well, after learning more about Gail Raponi's famous American Bull Molossers, we're ready to see his indoor training facility and witness his amazing canines in action. Listen, Gail, we drove 24 hours through blizzard snow to come see your dogs work. I didn't come all the way up here to see no dogs backing down. You gonna show me something? We're gonna show you something. You got Diesel coming in in the muzzle. He is a TNU Bulldog. Uh, he's on the small side compared to the ABMs, but uh, he's an 85 pound dog. What separates, you know, tough enough kennel Bulldog mm -hmm. compared to another Bulldog, per se? Well, I infused the Pit Bull Terrier into my line of Heinz Bulldog. Reason? And, uh, for longevity, health, tenacity, sure. fire, and loyalty. So you're saying this dog has some fire in him? Mm -hmm. How old is he? Sir? He was three. All right, this is an exercise we're gonna perform here today. It, uh, it's sort of a precursor to uh, gunfire assault. Okay, now we're gonna strip the muzzle off this dog and we're gonna allow Bill to take a bite. Good boy. Let's do a two man attack. Oh, 
Out you go. Good boy. Allie's gonna go pet her dog. The training is so good here at Tough Enough Kennels that even though these dogs are labeled man stoppers, they still have a gentle enough side that even a little girl can trust. Now, this is absolutely amazing to me. The dog's been fired up. He's gone after two guys at once. I've never <coughs> seen that before in my life. Mm -hmm. This is a clear-headed, stable dog that's been trained properly and appropriately. And there's something about your line of dogs. It seems like when, when they go after the bad guy, it's out of complete confidence. Yes, it is. It's total confidence and courage and, and tenacity, of course, and responsible. The dogs are very responsible for their handlers. Mm -hmm. This is an ABM, he's 14 months old. His name is Charlie. He's out of Boo and Macy. And uh, this is his third lesson. He's uh, an up and coming superstar. Relax, Dave, take it easy. Pet your dog up a little bit, okay? And then turn him on and step to the side just about a step and a half. Good boy, pet him up. What goes through your mind when you're suiting up and you're putting all that, that clown armor on? Is that what that is, clown armor? Well, it's protection armor. Protection, yeah. my bad. Yeah, we'll put you in it. I'll okay. let you see. All right. Things that go through your mind is obviously you don't want to get bit. Does that protect uh, safety. the extremities? Uh, partially, you still get pressure. So your hands and feet are free. So they can, you want to make sure your hands are watched, uh, no fingers flailing, your feet are back. You're taking in consideration the safety of you, the dog, and of course the handler. Not bad. See if you can slip that jacket off. Get out of here! No! 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 Good boy. Pet him up. Turn him right on. My job is to make the dog focus on the man, not the equipment. So I, I work the dog defensively to know that he's defending the handler, but I also work him in civil agitation to bring up his drive so that he makes a really good threat display and he defends the whole of the dog. That's it. Good, good enough, good enough. That's it. Any questions, boys? Third lesson. Huh? Third, third lesson. Now, third lesson. Is it safe to send someone up? Okay. Oh, certainly. Good. Go ahead. Well, thank you. Why not? Good boy. Yeah. After watching these guys handle Gail's powerful dogs, we're eager to see if a woman is able to do the same. Okay. This dog with this young lady here is, are, are going to demonstrate that not just men can handle protection dogs, but women as well. And in the proper environment and under supervision, they uh, generally excel as handlers. Straight defense. He never had a bite until he was probably, oh my God, two and a half years old. Straight defense, all civil muzzle work. That's it. There is the defensive protocol. It's considered the alarm, challenge, threat display. And it, at the end of those three behaviors, if the bad guy isn't convinced to flee and leave you alone, then we have engagement. That's when a bite is a good bite. Here at MVP Canine Supplements, our all-natural human-grade formulas are designed to enhance any diet, which even includes a raw food diet program. This is the basic diet of the dogs that uh, reside here at uh, Tough Enough Kennels. 
We've been feeding this diet now for about uh, seven years. Prior to this, we fed dog foods. Had limited success with litters, limited success with uh, recovery times after working dogs. They were sore. Uh, muscle development was nowhere near what it is today. Health issues. Just the raw diet is a, is a much more appropriate diet for a canine. They're carnivorous animals. They're not raccoons. They're dogs. They eat meat. Okay, yesterday we fed chicken. Today we're going to alternate and feed some beef. It's as simple as taking these chunks that we've uh, chopped up, throwing them right over the kennel. They eat them frozen. It takes them a little time to chew, but it works that jaw a little bit. Simple as that. They make light work of it too. <laughs> yeah, they like to take the inside. Yeah, it's all faster. As well as they eat, the program itself, as you can see, doesn't take long at all to perform. The task of feeding these dogs takes us probably 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, uh, to chop it up properly and just distribute it accordingly. Um, it does wonders for the dogs, as you can see, and uh, they're maintained simply. Next time on Way of the Canine Trainer, things get a little hairy. The dog compromised the handler's safety. Well, you, need, you, you actually need to handle them more. No, it don't get any easier when you leave either. Injuries happen. It's the nature of the beast. I mean, we're working without equipment a lot of times. You know, we have to trust the handler to be on top of his dog. You know, so we, we do our best to avoid injuries. You don't get that in a shits and sleep. The dog has to be responsible enough to come off the bite. They can't lust for the bite. There is no reward in the bite other than the fact that the bad guy is eliminated and he'll flee.